In this video, we're going to go over common identities that you want to be familiar with in regards to hyperbolic functions. So let's start with the even odd identities. Hyperbolic sine of negative x is equal to negative hyperbolic sine of x. So the hyperbolic sine function, it's an odd function. Notice that the sign in front of it changed from positive to negative as we inserted a negative x. Now, as for hyperbolic cosine, this is an even function. Hyperbolic cosine of negative x is equal to positive hyperbolic cosine of x. Now, let's focus on the Pythagorean identities. Let's make a comparison between the trigonometric functions and the hyperbolic functions. Now, the trigonometric functions, they're associated with the unit circle, which has the equation x squared plus y squared is equal to 1 squared. I mean, or just 1. Now, for the Pythagorean identities, which are related to the unit circle, cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. For the hyperbolic function, we have the equation of hyperbola, which opens in a horizontal direction. It's x squared minus y squared, as opposed to x squared plus y squared, equal 1. And we have this identity, hyperbolic cosine squared, minus hyperbolic sine squared, that's equal to 1. So very similar to this one, but instead of a positive sign, we have a negative sign. Now in trig, you've seen this formula. 1 plus tangent squared is equal to 1. I mean, not 1, is equal to secant squared. Now, the hyperbolic version of that equation looks like this. So 1 minus hyperbolic tan squared is equal to secant squared. So the only difference is, instead of a plus, we have a minus sign. Now, for the next one, it's going to be a little bit more different. 1 plus cotangent squared is equal to cosecant squared. And for the hyperbolic version of that equation, we have 1 minus hyperbolic cotangent squared. And it's equal to not positive, but negative hyperbolic cosecant squared. So there's a lot of similarities, but a few differences between the two types. Now, let's move on to the double angle formulas. The double angle formula for hyperbolic sine of 2x, it's 2 hyperbolic sine of x times hyperbolic cosine of x. This is very similar to the double angle formula for the regular uh, trig function. Sine 2x is 2 sine x cosine x. So there's not really much of a difference there. Now, for hyperbolic cosine of 2x, it's going to be equal to hyperbolic cosine squared of x plus hyperbolic sine squared of x. Next, we have the power reducing formulas. Hyperbolic sine squared is equal to negative 1 plus hyperbolic cosine 2x over 2. And then cosine squared is 1 plus cosine 2x over 2. So those are the power of reducing formulas for the hyperbolic functions of cosine and sine. Now, let's move on to the sum and difference formulas. 
hyperbolic sine of x plus y, or rather, let's color code this, x plus or minus y, this is going to be hyperbolic sine of x times hyperbolic cosine of y plus minus so notice the sign is not inverted when this is plus this will be plus when it's minus this will be minus and then we have hyperbolic cosine of x times hyperbolic sine of y now for cosine There's some similarities, but a few differences here. Instead of sine cosine, it's just going to be cosine cosine. So we have hyperbolic cosine of x times hyperbolic cosine of y. The sines won't be inverted. They will be the same. And then hyperbolic sine of x times hyperbolic sine of y. So those are the power reducing, I mean, those are the sum and difference formulas for hyperbolic functions. Now, if you want to convert from a hyperbolic function to an exponential function, here are three formulas you want to be familiar with, which by now, I'm pretty sure you already know. Hyperbolic sine of x is equal to e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2. Hyperbolic cosine of x is e to the x but plus e to the negative x over 2. Hyperbolic tangent of x is sine over cosine so if you were to divide these two, the twos will cancel, and you'll get e to the x minus e to the negative x over e to the x plus e to the negative x. Now, if you were to multiply the numerator and the denominator by e to the x, this equation becomes this, e raised to the 2x minus 1 over e raised to the 2x plus 1. So that's how you can convert hyperbolic sine, cosine, and tangent into its exponential form. Now, what about going from an exponential equation to a hyperbolic equation? If you have e to the x, you can replace that with hyperbolic cosine of x plus hyperbolic sine of x. As for e to the negative x, that is hyperbolic cosine of x, but minus hyperbolic sine of x. e to the 2x if you want it in terms of tangent, it's 1 plus hyperbolic tangent of x over 1 minus hyperbolic tangent of x. You can also basically square this equation to get e to the 2x. And that will give you cosine squared plus 2 sine cosine plus sine squared. The cosine squared plus sine squared, that could be converted into cosine 2x. The 2 sine cosine part, you could use a double angle formula and convert that to sine 2x. So you can convert e to the 2x into cosine sine, much like you see what you have here. So notice that if this is 1x, this is 1x. If this is 2x, we have 2x here. Now, there's a formula 
that really connects these equations together. Here it is. So we know that e to the x is hyperbolic cosine plus hyperbolic sine. So that means that e raised to the x raised to the n power is equal to hyperbolic cosine of x plus hyperbolic sine of x raised to the n. And you could look this up. This formula here is equal to cosine, hyperbolic cosine n times x plus hyperbolic sine n times x. Let's write that as e raised to the nx. So e to the 3x is cosine, hyperbolic cosine 3x plus sine 3x. e to the 4x, you can make that hyperbolic cosine 4x plus hyperbolic sine 4x. So with this formula, you can easily convert any exponential function with a base e into its hyperbolic version. So that's basically it. Those are some common hyperbolic identities that you want to be familiar with for this particular section.